So I don't know how many lenders are not doing DSCR loans right now, but you really need to because remember, investment properties is still a growing segment of the mortgage market right now when everything is contracting. Now, the great thing about DSCR loans is they're going to qualify the property more so than the individual. In short, if the rent on the investment property up to eight units, if it is 75% of what your mortgage payment is, then the property qualifies and all you have to do is come up with your down payment. And you're good to go on these things. The cool part is, is with Oak Tree, they have a 40 year loan with an interest only option on it for 10 years. And then it just turns into a 30 year fixed rate loan. The thing is killer. Rates are absolutely fantastic on this. And this is just opportunity abound. Now, Oak Tree has been doing this longer than anybody, I think in the non-QM space right now, they've got a long legacy of doing DSCR loans. They're fantastic. Their rates are great. And this would really help you and your realtor partners out with investment properties and a growing segment of the mortgage market. Click this banner right over here to talk with one of their account reps and learn more about it and even how to market it. Now on with the show. And this, my friends, is absolutely priceless. This story is the embodiment of virtually everything I rail against in the mortgage industry. That being, when regulation and the government gets involved, everything kind of turns to crap. It's like what Ronald Reagan said. What are the scariest words in the English language? I'm from the government and I'm here to help. So if you think I'm wrong, let's just look at the Dodd-Frank Act alone. Then we'll get into the priceless story behind today's show. So the Dodd-Frank objectives, number one is to promote financial stability. For whom I might ask, Mr. and Mrs. I live paycheck to paycheck, Check. Number two, improve accountability and transparency in the United States financial system. Okay. Think fintech laws here, people. Put forth by the CFPB that states explicitly, yes, explicitly, that fintech companies only need to disclose what they're doing to you with their financial programs if they want to. That's the opposite of the goal of Dodd-Frank. Number three, in too big to fail. Banks are bigger now than they've ever been, courtesy of regulation that became too expensive for smaller institutions, leading to no new bank formations and smaller banks getting absorbed by the bigger banks, not to mention bailing out systemically important institutions like big banks is now actually the letter of the law. So they screwed that one up too. And number four, improve accountability and transparency in the United States financial system. Again, look at fintech, sandbox laws, and the legal shell game taking place with our administrators right now. Okay, so that's that. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, it's the Community Reinvestment Act, which was passed in 1977. The Community Reinvestment Act, the CRA, was passed to fight explicitly racist redlining policies and requires federal bank regulators, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Depository Institution Corporation, the FDIC, to evaluate the performance of banks and thrifts to determine how well each meets the credit needs of its entire community, including low to moderate income neighborhoods. Independent mortgage banks, credit unions, and non-banks, you, are not subject to CRA laws. Okay, so you, regional banks, brokers, credit unions, you know, pretty much every lender watching this video right now, yeah, you're you're not governed by every regulatory body in the country when it comes to CRA goals to help underserved and minority communities. So the question then becomes, how well do you, the unregulated lender, stack up in helping underserved and minority communities next to the regulated CRA regulated big depositories that must follow the letter of the law set forth by the OCC, the Fed Board, the FDIC, and now even the CFPB? Remember, banks with government mandates and regulations via CRA Community Reinvestment Acts against you. You. Not really so regulated here. Well, let's look at it. So when it comes to loans made to predominantly neighborhoods of color for low to moderate income households, regulated banks came in at 22.2% and you, the unregulated lenders, came in at 26.4%, meaning unregulated lenders actually did better. When it comes to middle income neighborhoods, regulated banks did 3.7% of their loans to neighborhoods of color and non-regulated lenders, you, did 6.5%. So you beat them again. When it comes to upper income neighborhoods, regulated banks did 1.9%. You did 3.5%. So you beat them again. And when it comes to all the loans written to everybody on the socioeconomic scales, regulated banks did 5.6% of their loans to neighborhoods of color and non-regulated lenders like you did 9% of your loans to neighborhoods of color. In short, you, the non-CRA lenders outside of the oversight of all of these regulatory bodies wrote a larger percentage of your loans to neighborhoods of color even though you were not explicitly mandated to do so under the CRA Act. Banks who have the mandate tripped and fell coming out of the blocks on this one. Now that may surprise you, but it doesn't me because this seems to be a trend. So I guess the moral to the story is this. If you want lenders to kick ass and help everybody, just get the hell out of their way and let them write loans. See, lenders, like everybody else, are in part governed by self-interest. It goes something like this. The more loans I write, the more money I make. 
period. Not to mention, lenders and even realtors come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and creeds. And if we're to split hairs with LO comp laws, kinda hard to gouge people right now, isn't it? So why do I bring this up? Well, because there is a groundswell and a big one from the current administration to put credit unions, non-banks, and independent mortgage banks under the jurisdiction of all those agencies that I just named and the Community Reinvestment Act that governs depository banks that failed to write as many loans as you did when it came to minority communities. So what does this tell you? Well, here's what it absolutely screams at me. The act of regulation itself seems to be more important than the intended outcome of said regulation. That's government for you, isn't it? Remember, the scariest words ever mentioned, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Make it a great day and make sure you subscribe down below and share this with everybody and keep the conversation going. I appreciate all of you. Happy selling. Talk to you on Monday.